much games. Your move, Unreal. for teaching a mule to play poker, breaking one of the few laws in that frontier town at the time. His goal was to get revenge on his old posse who had packed him with lead and left him with a permanent address under three feet of Texas clay. Then get dangerously drunk on Applejack whiskey. He was a one-man judge, jury, and executioner on the bloody vengeance trail. He was the gun stringer. Taking the bead to the pins, gun stringer tested his aim after the nuisances of rising from the dead. Years ago, his old posse had shot him in the back and given him a one-way ticket to Boot Hill. They were the usual gang of samurai cowboys, voodoo priestesses, cutthroat wildcatters, purveyors of iniquities better left unmentioned, like dressing a horse in women's pantaloons, and wavy tube man. Something told him they would not be hard to find. The image of that air-filled betrayer still fresh on his mind, the gunstringer set out to mark his first target off the list. A lifetime of fierce, fistic encounters left him light on his feet. The gun stringer was drawn from long days and nights in the saddle. Ten pounds of raw hide and muscle.
It was greed that turned his posse against him. Like vultures, they turned on him without a second thought. He was the fiercest gun slammer in all of Texas. No man could match his draw. It was a gift from the underworld. El Taco Sin Piedad. The Deathbringer without mercy. Each bite brought a clarity of focus, a will resolute. Those who tasted of it would be forever changed. Wavy tube men are a predictable bunch. When they drink through their pay, they find work at saloons, dance halls, and gynecologists' offices. Flailing their arms outside with an air of jollity, even the most trail-hardened cowpuncher finds hard to resist. Sensing the gunstringer's quandary, the wavy tube man doubled his efforts, knowing that if he could take the edge off his opponent's bloodlust, the fight would be his. He'd have to lean out to bushwhack him proper. Tube man received his everlasting. The gun stringer felt the hand of fate upon him. He knew that from time to time, whenever the trail got too rough, he could call upon the hand to send his enemies to join the heavenly choir. But at what price, he wondered. cut through the high plains like a scar on an otherwise perfect porcelain beauty. Its iron horse with its oil baron's brand, a symbol of the boundless wealth gushing from underneath the earth. The gun stringer vowed to fill the old pioneer cemetery, two to a grave if necessary, until he got his man. were terrified of the Devil's Taco. The Gunstringer embraced the Peligroso power. Like a hate-filled tornado, the Gunstringer swept through the desert, sparking the end of the line for any man or beast unfortunate enough to wander in his path. His bullets streaked skyward, knocking their targets to the ground.
escape from his draw. TNT wrangling was a dangerous business filled with catastrophic injury. You could count the unblemished practitioners among their kind on the nubs of one hand. Cowardly of creatures will spoil for a fight if you mess with its den. The gunstringer knew a ruckus at the Baron's oil wells would flush that traitor from his hiding.
enemy found its mark. Gunstringer watched news of his return spread on panicked horseback. Good. Let that Baron know he'd soon get what was coming. There are times when the cold report of a pistol doesn't get personal enough. The gunstringer flexed his leather-clad hands and relished the meaty impact of a hard-swung punch. He felt a twinge of sorrow at their passing. Where he walked, death walked with him. Another taco was soon to make its way down his belt. Gunstringer wondered if this sorry foe knew what he had come up. Bullets found their mark on all six targets. The gunstringer traded precision for raw power. Gunstringer tried to shoulder his way past, but could not. He had six targets in his sights. Not one would escape his aim. The oil baron's influence infected the landscape, feeding on the land like a bloated tick. Getting to the Baron would mean disposing of his cronies and hangers-on, starting with the corrupt sheriff.
A spray of bullets hit all six of their intended targets. Through no will of his own, the gunstringer found himself inside the bank, as if some fatal leaven were at work around him, moved by some unseen hand. Peeking out would give him a line at the gutless cowards. someone wears a ball-pointed star on the chest. Don't put them on the right side of the law. The sheriff was dirty with the oil baron's money, and nothing would save him now. Judged his stride and fell short. Six targets spotted. Master hand at his craft, hitting all six targets.
side of the Devil's Taco. The gunster there embraced Peligroso Pound. His shoe streak had disappeared. His enemy was safely ensconced on the other side of the cover. <laughs> Sheriff came cheap and died young in this territory. The gunstringer reckoned this one had outlived his rough and tenfold. <laughs> He would have to lean around this couple to bushwhack him properly. Bad news travels on fast horses. The gunstringer smiled at the thought of the oil baron bowed and bogged with grief at the loss of his most prized possession. He leapt nimble-like to the other side like a goat. without
old Baron pitched his pennies where he could, refusing to buy brakes for any of his trains, calling them Namby Pamby Fopper, weak and gutless. But he changed his tune quick enough at the gunstringer's approach, offering vast rewards to any who could stop the vengeful warrior. Let's get him home. steps grew quick. There would be no escape from his draw. Surviving the West meant knowing the time to cut and run. Gunstringer came down. He leapt like a grasshopper to the other side. Salsa Picani surged through his bones. The gunstringer took a fierce hit, but he was unwavered. The gunstringer hit the bottom of the cliff with the grace of a sack of rocks. The ground kicked like a mule, but the gunstringer was undaunted. Nothing would stop him from finding the Baron.
whole gang had conspired towards the gun stringer in the But it was the oil bearer who first pulled the trigger, taking a coward shot at the gun stringer's back. Six with taste lead. A gunshot, lightning, the striking of a match, even the popping of bubble wrap for amusement or to alleviate stress was all it took to set off a stampede. Over 700 tons of horn and hoof ready to eliminate anything in its path. out of cover. The 
The gunstringer galloped forward, the ringing shots of his revolver a crescendo over the thundering hooves. It was not the first or the last time he'd ride the stallion towards certain death. He reached the other side without difficulty. Gunstringer came down but felt nothing but air beneath him. Leapt like a grasshopper to the other side. Let's get him, boy. <laughs> Even at full gallop, the pursuit weren't quitting. It was time to fight from a higher vantage. The Desperados caught wise to his plan, and the driver would pay the price. He had six targets spotted. He was a master hand at his craft, hitting all six targets. animals. This was no exception. It put an end to his merry scramble. The sneaking oil buzzard perched his rotund figure atop the well from which he drained the land dry like a tick on a suckling pig. The gun stringer looked up, cold resolve on his face. He'd run plumb into everything the oil baron could throw at him. Nothing would stop him from getting his comebackance now. Where he walked, death walked with him. Where 
he walked, death walked. A chill spread across the desert as the gunstringer and the oil baron stared each other down. It was a battle of strength versus speed. The massive power of the oil baron pitted against the lightning quick draw and deadly aim of the gunstringer. What followed was a deadly ballad of destruction. Mm. Hate distilled into its most terrible, beautiful form. The charity calendar promised an elegant and respectful portrayal of the smartest, classiest women on the western frontier who offered companionship in exchange for money. Many men had fallen sway to the brothel madam's influence, but the gunstringer only saw her part in his betrayal. There would be no charming moments in the retribution headed her way. Stringer saw the gaps ahead and prayed he'd make each one in turn.
With the bayou filled only with outlaws, cheats, and ne'er-do-wells, the brothel madam imported a different folk for her private guard. <laughs> <laughs> the lumberjacks were well accustomed to blades and saws and fiercely protective of their rights to fell nature where they pleased, covering a 50 square mile border past which the madam awaited. He moved willy-nilly like a scalded hen, crashing into the scenery. He hit all six targets at once. Sand about him turned to glass as rivers of fire poured forth from his weapon.
streak had ended, it was time to start fresh. Gunstringer covers the gap with ease. He'd carried the fight to the center of that logging camp, but abominations and stranger tales lay ahead. To get answers on the brothel madam's location, the gunstringer would have to find the head of the crew and knock him about till he felt like cooperating. He reached the other side without difficulty. Did his eyes deceive him? Surely he was seeing things. Left like a grasshopper to the other side. Lord Harry, that was close. Gunstringer covered the gap with ease. with memories and horrors long suppressed. He'd always scrapped more than an ornery badger, and that day had been no different. He went to the camp looking for a fight, not expecting the atrocities he'd never unsee. His shooting streak came to a halt.
Looks like he'd have to settle this the old-fashioned way. Jack's life is a hard one, given the long days and lonely nights. Even so, the terrible union he witnessed that night took the fight out of him and left only night terrors and permanent scars. Now here was their spawn, the power of a lumberjack, the toughness of a gator, and ugliness borrowed in equal parts from both. Determination. No matter its origins, it had showed grit, and in that was worthy of respect. to the riverboat at the head of the armada. The duo of man and half-man, half-alligator sailed across the water with a grace and speed that made Moses crossing the Red Sea look like a two-bit procession. The gunstringer ran smack dab into the terrain like a stampede bull.
of the brothel, madam, like flies to honey. The gunstringer knew if he stowed a boy, it'd ride straight to her. This unlucky soul's skull was about to meet dual fists. Shot 
shockwave hit him. His vision blurred and his balance Gunstringer winced in pain. Try as he might, the enemy had dug in deeper than an Alabama tail. The gunstringer pressed onward. There were bullets aplenty, and the harvest had come. Mardi Gras was in full swing. Heaven help the man who got between a Dixieland band and their gratuities. They didn't call themselves the St. Louis Stompers for nothing. Stringer. The madam had stolen his gun away during a buxom embrace, leaving the oil baron open to take his shot without consequence. Her act had been no less cowardly, and one that would be punished equally in full. took on the sand about him turned to glass as rivers of fire poured forth from his weapon from his draw. The shooting streak ground to a halt. He leapt like a jackrabbit to the other side. He had six targets spotted. There was one thing Andrew Jackson loved, it was a scrap. 
Old Hickory fought in the American Revolution, defeated Tecumseh at the Battle of Horseshoe Bend, beat back the British in the War of 1812, won the Seminole War, and fought in 13 duels. One of them just for being falsely accused of passing gas. Whatever demonic force possessed his statue that day, the screeching of iron reverberated throughout the French Quarter and set everyone there on notice that an unnatural vengeance was upon them. bedroom fortress trapped inside a fever dream of femininity. The gunstringer steeled himself for the wild-eyed body onslaught to come. of time and the toll of gravity like a lasso wildcat. She wore enough face paint to send half the Comanches in Texas on the warpath and had a top shelf you could lay a Stetson on. But no amount of foppery could conceal her deceitful core and the gunstringer made ready to address her true self with the language of gunpowder and steel.
momentum was weakened, and the time had come to strike. <laughs> When the gang first formed, they took on a young samurai on the condition that he had firearms to his bladed arsenal. And thus did the Beardmaster join in their mission of monetary reallocation. His subsequent betrayal of the Gunstringer, however, was not an issue that would be so easily adjudicated. side like a wildcat.
the West was a harsh one. An eye for an eye, like in the olden times. There was justice to be done that day, and he was the man for it. He shot all six targets with ease. Jump to the other side with the power and speed of a wild Mustang. A gunfighter can do no better than to shoot six targets at once. All streaks must come to an end. Master's dojo lay somewhere beyond the Great Wall that protected it from thieves and Comanche raiders. If he could not get around it, he would have to find a way over it. The stone bulwark was an affront to any who loved the freedom of the unadorned open range. But the Beardmaster was right to live in fear, one day his ill-gotten gains would require payment. Person. 
like a scalded hen past the fallen rock. He left nimble light to the other side like a goat. Absence of remorse, wrapped in a crunchy shell. Oh, bonsai! Texas kind. It's how the West was born. Disappear. The gunstringer's resolve unchanged. He would exact his bloody revenge.
riot of brilliant colors and intriguing shapes wafted towards him on a heavenly breeze, intent on his destruction. strapped to his back, but the real fight had just begun. Asian fineries were lost on the gunstringer, 
who preferred a bedroll and campfire to all this foolish ghetto. stress of riding the vengeance trail can have ill effects on one's health, contributing to heart attack, stroke, and emotional overeating. The sweet smell of jasmine and the sound of birds singing relieved his mental attention as his subconscious mind saw oceans instead of gravel, islands instead of rocks, and the beard master's flaming, bullet-ridden corpse in every tree. like a jackrabbit to the other side. like a scalded hen past the fallen rock. to fear heights, or at least it could be said that they avoided each other's company. Something all about reanimating and then facing down death a dozen times over had taken the edge off his old anxiety. Besides that, he was a stubborn, ornery fella, not taking kindly to be told what to do, even by his own mind. nearly worn through the grip, the 
gun stringer landed at last in the inner sanctum. The peaceful surroundings stand in counterpoint to the violence that was soon to come. The gun stringer gripped the steel and bade all enemies to come forth and face his wrath. Possible. Trimming a hummingbird's eyelashes with a wave of his sword, or bending sixty penny spikes like you'd fold a newspaper. The gunstringer's only equalizer was his six shooter, but he'd have to endure a mighty beating just to get his shots in. Gunstringer found the Beard Master in his private sanctuary, where the Buddhist Master had spent the last year and a half meditating without interruption in an attempt to merge his consciousness with the rainbow. His holiness of unsurpassable blessings was about to let loose with a fistful of infinite wisdom, as he called it, all over the Gunstringer's face. He readied himself for the imbroglio.
Lady of the Dead would be the last target and the hardest to find. She roamed the shadowy paths between life and the beyond. And to track her, he searched the towns along the blurred border. Her betrayal had hurt the most. And for that, he would make her pay. The gunstringer ran smack dab into the terrain like a stampeding bull. The screams of the dying faded to a distant moon. For ringing in his ears was only the crunch of the Taco Diablo. He sprung to the other side like a wildcat. The water in hold, once a place of refreshment and the occasional awkward group bath, had turned to dust littered with the bones of those who had counted on it being there for their survival, only to be left high and dry. The dead will walk the earth. Is that how these specters came to be here? Is that how the gunstringer came to be here? He had no doubt the devil would make room for him on his return. Gunstringer shook the cobwebs from his head. Six targets in his sights. Not one would escape his aim. Some 
ancient deviltry was afoot, and he'd bet his last cigarillo that the Lady of the Dead was behind it. stranger, and the lines between life and afterlife grew hazy in the burning sun. He'd found the path he sought, but from here on, there would be no turning back. six of their intended targets. Were these hallucinations? Figments of the mind brought on by fever and heat? It was best to shoot them all. Madness or not, the gunstringer wasn't one for taking chances. All six would taste lead. had six targets spotted. The underworld was well pleased with the wrath of the gunship. They offered him a gift of sustenance and vigor. with the same lethal efficiency as his bullets find in their mark.
six targets with ease. He hit all six targets at once. Gunstringer remembered only patches of the time he'd spent wandering the afterlife before he'd reasserted himself on the mortal plane. He came back for vengeance, and his soul would not quiet until justice was served.
on new meaning, the gun stringer shook the cobweb. Six targets with ease. Desperately, they pulled at his soul, hoping to take his place in the mortal realm. Sand about him turned to glass as rivers of fire poured forth from his weapon.
the dead was near. The gunstringer was sure of that. But these were her lands, and nothing here seemed for certain. Burned in the gunstringer's memory was the Lady of the Dead's gloating laughter as she stood over his grave. Spurned and jealous, she turned the others against him, plotted his early exit from the mortal realm. There wasn't a horror in this place that would stop him from exactly his revenge. Gunstringer misjudged his stride and fell short. nothing but air beneath him.
sight rarely seen, at least outside of the dubious dens of the purveyors of otherworldly experiences. Gunstringer suddenly recalled his father's dying words to him. Never talk out loud to your hat in public. Never let a coyote represent you in court. And most of all, never ever mess around with a voodoo priestess. For once, he had to admit the old man had a point. Gunstringer leapt in and struck the Dark Queen with a flurry of blows. Gunstringer felt jubilation at the thought of his old posse sitting on ice at Formaldehyde Smith's funeral home. But what now? He had not counted on outliving his former companions. Was he destined to ride the trail forever? Or did fate have one last hand to play before it cashed in his chips for good?
Everything you were is more and more forgotten What they used to say may still ring true But now your heart is rotten Don't deny the invitation for one more chance Don't deny your enemies their one last dance Grasp the pole of your
gone and chosen aside True redemption quietly passes by On this cowboy's last breath